There's a fish. <clears throat> Feels like a decent one. It's a real deep hole in here, really windy. Went through a couple fly changes and then just put on a size 16 generic waltz in the bottom and a uh, France fly on my dropper. First cast and he hit it. Sunny days, clear water, generic. Nice fish. I believe it's a brownie. Yeah, decent brownie on the waltz. Nice brownie. Nice brownie, real nice brown. Nice chunk. Get a head on that thing. Nice brownie. That's a good 15 inches. Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So I'm fishing the uh, beaver kill and the Catskills. It's a cold day. It's uh, probably around 52 degrees right now. The water's temperature is uh, pretty chilly uh, got down into the 30s last night so it's in the probably the upper 40s right now it might hit 50 today the temperature because uh, I think the conditions are very similar to yesterday so and I know the highs probably got around 50 so you know I think as uh, the day warms up they might move up into the rifts but this is a nice deep hole here and uh, we'll see how we do today it's a good start there's another one this feels like a decent fish too well i felt that um i just kind of felt it bottom out my drift there and just trying to stay ahead of the wind and I just saw my cider just barely move. This definitely feels like a decent fish here. It's a big old brown here. Big brown. Mm. Boy, I cannot get him to the top. There we go. What a fighter this guy is. Wow. Mm. Nice fish. Real nice fish. What a pig this guy is. What a fish this guy is, man. Just a 17 inch tank of a brown trout right there. Look at that brown. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Kind of jacked up in the back, but man, what a fighter. Thank you, Mr. Brown. What a great fish that was. What a great fight. Size 16, simple generic waltz right there. Perfect sunny day bug. So I came back to where I was here. So you can see there's a bit of a soft area right there. There's some rocks underneath there. And that fish hit right kind of on the bottom of my drift. I know my bugs were bottoming out and <clears throat> there's a downstream wind and I could just, just when my bugs got below me, I just saw my cider just twitch a little and he was on. Got him right at the bottom of that drift. That's what I love about the beaver kill. There are some nice, nice brownies in here. The beaver kill holds a special, special place in my heart, man. I just love it here. I love the history of this river. I said it last year when I did a video. This is, uh, 
really where my dad taught me how to trout fish. I caught my very first trout here on the beaver kill. So I've got to make it here every single year. Good start, two nice brownies. There's a dish. Oh, this looks like a nice fish here. Oh yeah. Wow. Right at the head there in that soft spot. Mm. Wow, look at that. Wow, what a fish. What a fish. Beautiful jump that was. God almighty, that was awesome. This is a slob right here. This is an absolute hog. It ain't coming in that easy, I can tell you that much. footing here oh, 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 oh heartache oh, damn hook just pulled out my god that looked like a 20 inch rainbow right there what a fish that was good gosh mm, what a fish wow look at that my hook bent out that is the first time I've had a Hannock 450 bend out like that. Mm. That was just a pig of a wild rainbow. That was minimum 20 inches right there. God almighty, what a fatty too. First time a Hannock 450 has bent out on me. Look at that, that just shows you how strong 6X is. I'm using 6X and the hook bent out on that fish. Wow. That was a trophy. That's gonna sting for a while right there. All right, I've worked this run pretty good. Pretty well, I should say. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do a little cleanup with a mop. I'm gonna run that through there. See how we do with that. There's a fish. Hit the mop. Nice. <laughs> or did he hit the mop? Another nice fish. Today is a uh, nice fish day. Nice rainbow. I believe it's a rainbow. <clears throat> yep, he hit the mop. Look at that. It's a nice, nice beaver kill rainbow right here. Just a beautiful, beautiful beaver kill rainbow. Look at that guy. That is a chunk right there, buddy. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow. He's almost 16 inches right there. Mop, corner pocket. Look at that rainbow. What a beautiful beaver kill rainbow right there. Thank you there, Mr. Bo. Thank you, Mr. Bo. Good old mop. I'm not even a big mop guy. <laughs> but, you know, with this wind, it's the thing about a mop. It can really steady your drift. I mean, I've got a, this is a 3.8 bead on, and then you got that body. It just soaks up the water and it just really weighs that, or it just really slows that drift down. And it really is a good fly. And it's not so much for me, not so much the fish catching ability, but it just really gets that, it really holds your drift in deeper water. And especially when you got a big wind and it, uh, it really worked right there. Let's 
see that mop it just really anchors the drift that's the beauty about it when you get that wind and deep water it just really slows your drift down just because that whole body gets waterlogged that's what i like about the mop and it can't hurt that i just busted a nice rainbow on it There's another fish. <laughs> Look at that. Another nice fish too. Wow. Today is just a nice fish day. What a fish. Holy smokes. Oh, got me in that rock down there. Son of a bitch. Wow. He busted me off too. I know he did. Ah, I should have put the hammer on the spool and just held on. Yep. All right, back at it. Boy, once again, you can see this soft area right there, and he was just in that. <clears throat> Whack that mop. <clears throat> there we go, here's a fish. <clears throat> nice one same run just working this run another nice fish here <clears throat> I believe he's on the mop again ah, nice brownie real nice brown Beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that. The mop. What a beautiful brownie. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So you can see the slack water to the right here is just off of that main current. <clears throat> just, you can sit here and work a run over and over. You can work up, you can swing back give it a little rest and go through again and you can see what happens how <clears throat> how many fish you might miss the first time and you just turn around just make some really nice drifts again and you can pick up more fish and this mop is really with this wind it's really just ideal it's just giving me a really nice drift really anchoring it there that was an upstream cast i just laid the cider on the water and just slowly picked it back up as it came towards me, pulling in the slack with my non-rod hand. There we go, there's another fish. <clears throat> Another nice fish. So I cast it straight up. I don't know, I was working my, just slowly lifting my cider off the water. And I knew out in front of me, I had gotten to depth. And then I just started raising and it hit just below me. That's just what you have to do in this wind. You've just got to, <clears throat> I believe he's on the dropper. Yep, brownie. It's the first one on the dropper here. Nice brownie. Nice brownie. Got him on a size 16 pheasant tail. Just a good old pheasant tail. Nice 15 incher right there. Good looking fish. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Good looking fish. So once again, what I did there, it's really deep out here. We got a severe upstream wind. I just cast it upstream, it was really burying my cider and lifting up the slack. And right when I got here, I just started raising my rod tip, got a little vertical right here, and he just hit below me when the drift was really bottoming out. Sometimes in the wind, you just have to do what you have to do. 
So with the ciders on the water there, I'm just really staying in touch with it. And then right here, I know I'm achieving depth. And I just start to get a little vertical when it just starts getting towards me there. So once again, now I'm just starting to lift it up. I'm gonna take a couple steps up here and repeat the process. Just got the cider on the water, rods low, staying in contact. And right here I can elevate a little I know I'm at depth right there. Just right when it gets below me, I just tick bottom there. That's why those last two fish were just below me in the drift. So I worked my way back up to the head here again. So <clears throat> I fished this run. It is probably 20 yards long. Look at this. My fly is dangling in the water and I just had a fish nail it. Look at that. Nice fish, too. Wow. Unbelievable. All nice fish. God. Mm. Well, I'll tell you here, <laughs> what I did in a minute. I'm going to get a fish in. There we go. Nice brownie. Smallest fish I got. That's a nice 12 inch chunk. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So this run is about 20 yards long. And I fished it twice. So the first time I came through, I'm not sure how many. I mean, I've done well. And that 12 inch chunk rainbow was the smallest fish I got. I've got some really nice fish out of here. Lost two whoppers. And that one rainbow was tremendous. But it just shows you how when you go through a run, especially this is just fishy looking water. But when you go through that run and you think you're fishing it really well, it just shows you you're just not doing as good as you think. So I came through, I went back down and I refished it and I think I just picked up uh, four or five more. I'm not quite sure, but so this was probably an hour of fishing I did here and uh, I caught some really nice fish out of one 20 yard run. Good stuff. So here's the bugs I was using left to right. That's a uh, size 12 mop that has a 3.8 bead on it you can see how windy it is the wind's blowing it around uh in the middle there that's a size 16 pheasant tail uh just with a uh black uh ice dub collar and on the right that's a uh, size 16 drab waltz with a 3.3 uh, bead uh that mop just does, does a great job when it gets uh, waterlogged it just does an awesome job in the wind it'll really hold your drift nice and tight and steady and uh, obviously I picked up some really nice fish on it. So I'm gonna be calling it quits here on the beaver kill. Um, uh, well, I'm gonna keep fishing, but uh, I just wanted to show you how I work a run 20 yards long. I worked it over twice. It had everything you needed uh, for nice fish. I mean, it was about four feet deep um, and it was a type of run that you could work over twice. So what I did is I came up, I really rotated through my bugs, trying to figure out the, uh, the formula and um, it was just between that waltz and the mop, uh, just the mop helped out tremendously with the wind. It really anchored my drift and I pulled some really nice fish out in an hour. Um, and it just shows you when you really take your time, grit it off and just really six inches at a time is what I did. And uh, I just had some really good success. So the next time you're out there on the stream, and this is a heavily pressured stream, you can see the road is right here. And this is actually a famous run. So the next time you're out there on a stream, no matter how pressured it is, when you hit that really nice run, just take your time, figure out the formula, but really focus on your drift. And that's what I did here. I mean, the wind played havoc. I was laying my sight on the water way above me, then slowly, slowly lifting it up 
and really getting vertical. And most of my fish, most of them, hit just right in front of me or just below me. I think that really big rainbow I hooked, um, that was out in front of me. But um, uh, just a lot of success in a 20 yard run. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And as always, tight lines, everybody. I'll talk to you later.